once again welcome to our session of my channel learning area if you've not subscribed to our channel do so please hit the subscribe button it's free of charge you don't have to pay anything to subscribe just hit the subscribe button so that when we post a video you'll be among the first sets to get it you can also hit notification bell so that that will be put into place now what we do in the learning area is that we teach science engineering technology uh, the sciences may consist of mass physics and chemistry whatever subject that has to do with calculation is what we do so today we'll be going into thermodynamics So, what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics can be divided into two parts. We have thermo and dynamics. So, thermo means heat. Thermo is heat and dynamics means movement. So, we can say thermodynamics is the movement of heat in a particular system. Also, know that movement has to do with work because work is the product of force that is distance. So, if the force is causing a movement, causing a particular body to make, cover up a distance, automatically the work has been done. That means thermodynamics is also work done in a system by the application of what heat. So, if anybody asks to define thermodynamics, you can say it's the heat movement in a system or it is the work done in a system by the application of the force. And which force is being applied here? Heat. Now, the system may be um, an open system, may be a closed system, it may be an isolated system. Now, I'm saying system, system. What is system? System is the area under consideration. So, for instance, we have the earth crust and we have a particular body we are considering. Now, this body becomes our system. Body becomes our system. Why this other part of the earth crust that we don't consider becomes the surrounding? So, the particular body under study is the system, while the other part of the earth cross, apart from this particular body, is the surrounding. Now, this surface of the system that makes contact with the surrounding is known as the boundary. So, this surface here is known as the boundary. Now, the boundary is the part of the system that makes contact with the surrounding. So, if there is heat in the surrounding and, there is, uh, and, the, band and the system is cold, that means the boundary has to be, the boundary is now making contact with the cold system and the hot surrounding. Also, if the system is hot and the surrounding is cold, then the boundary is the one that is having contact with the cold system and the hot surrounding. So, whichever way, the boundary is the one that interacts with the system or interacts both with the system and the surrounding. Now, this boundary may be movable or fixed. For a movable boundary, we have something like the piston that is used to compress gas in a beaker for instance and this is our beaker for instance now we have our gas here now this our gas becomes our system because it is our area under study so this our gas becomes our system now this body here becomes our boundary because it is the one that connects the system with the surrounding so this becomes our boundary so you see, when you move this piston, it's movable. So you can easily move it inside and go outside. So the boundary may be fixed or movable. The boundary may be fixed or movable. Movable is the one that you can easily move, like something like this. While fixed is the one that you cannot move. So the boundary may be fixed or movable. Now, now the system may be uh, a system that allows heat and mass to go through it or allows work and mass to go through it so if we have a system this is our system where heat can go through it heat in and heat can leave the system heat out then mass can go through in or matter mass in and mass can also leave the system mass out now, this kind of system is known as the open system. Now, why is it open? Because heat and mass can go into the system as well as leave the system. For example, we have a um, human body. Now, human body, we can take in matter, we can eat food, just taking mass and taking it also. And we can also pass it out. So, every living organism is an example of an open system because we can take in and we can take out. Now, if, for instance, the system can take in but cannot leave cannot release out of the system 
automatically it becomes a closed system. Now, the opposite of the open system is the isolated system, not the closed system. So for an open system, heat can go in, heat can leave the system. Mass can go in, mass can leave the system. But for an isolated system, heat and mass cannot go in and heat and mass will not leave the system. So automatically, we have a system of this nature where heat cannot penetrate the boundary, mass cannot penetrate the boundary. So automatically, heat cannot leave the boundary and mass cannot leave the boundary. This kind of system is called the isolated system. It is isolated from the surrounding. So there is no interaction between the system and the surrounding. Nothing is going from the surrounding to the system, and nothing is leaving from the system to the surrounding. That is open system and isolated system. Now, this is opposite of open system. But we have a third system, which is known as the closed system. So for a closed system, mass cannot go in, but heat can go in. Only heat can go into a closed system. So we have a system that is closed. Now, heat can go into the system and heat can leave the system. But mass cannot go into the system and mass cannot leave the system. Example of a closed system is the Earth's crust, whereby the sun releases heat to the Earth and the Earth releases vapor back to the atmosphere. But there is no mass coming from the atmosphere into the Earth and there is no mass leaving from the Earth into the atmosphere. Only heat is being exchanged between the system and the surrounding. That is an example of a closed system. So for a system, we have three types of system. We have the open system where heat and mass can freely go in and leave out. Now, we have an isolated system where heat and mass cannot go in and leave the system. Then the third one will have a closed system where only heat can enter the system and only heat can leave the system. An example of an open system, we have the living organisms that can take in uh, mass and heat and pass it out. An example of an isolated system is a thermal flask, which is to keep food warm. When you put your food into a thermal flask and you lock it, you cook it, now there is no exchange of heat or mass with surrounding. That food inside will remain heat hot till you come back to open it. So there is no exchange of heat between the surrounding for an isolated system. Now for a closed system example is the earth cross, whereby the earth receives heat from the atmosphere, of heat, heat from the sun, and, does, and exchange it back with the atmosphere, but does not receive any mass and does not exchange any mass with the atmosphere. So somebody will ask, which system should we choose for a particular operation? Now, if you want to carry out a particular uh, operation or a particular experiment, the, the system you choose will depend on what you want to achieve with that particular experiment. So, for instance, I want to carry out an experiment and I want the experiment or the system to exchange heat and mass with surrounding, then I will use an open system. But if I want to carry out an experiment whereby I will do it in an airtight container, that will not exchange heat and mass with the surrounding, automatically I go for an isolated system. Now, if I want only heat to be exchanged, maybe the body of the container should be hot, but the content of the container does not leave the container, then automatically I go with a closed system. Now, to study a particular system, when you have to study a particular system, whether it's an open, isolated, or closed system, you have to go through two approaches. It's either you go through the macroscopic approach or the microscopic approach. So we have macroscopic and microscopic. Now, what does this approach mean? Now, the macroscopic approach is the way is the approach whereby you study something like the volume, the mass, there's an increase in size. Just study the system as a whole. That is macroscopic approach. But for the microscopic app, we are studying the molecules of the system, the atomic size, atomic, the atoms of the particular system. So you are going to study something like the vibration, which is the entropy, or maybe the heat content, which is the enthalpy. Those are under microscopic. But for macroscopic, is when you are studying the body of the system, studying the system as a whole. Maybe the increase in size of the system, as well as the increase in volume of the system, then that is macroscopic. But for microscopic, maybe the vibrations within the molecules of the system, then you have it as microscopic approach. Now, the system may be in three states. Maybe in the solid state, maybe in the liquid state, it may be in the gaseous state, or some people call it vapor. But there is a difference between gaseous phase, or gaseous state rather, and vapor. Now, for a gas, a gas will remain a gas, you know, irrespective of the temperature. But for vapor, 
vapor changes from either solid or liquid upon heating. So if you can have a gas at 25 degrees Celsius and that same gas will remain a gas at 75 degrees Celsius. But a vapor at 100 degrees Celsius was once a liquid at 30 degrees Celsius or a solid at minus 5 degrees Celsius. So you see the difference between gaseous, gases and vapors. Gases remain gases respective of the temperature, while vapors are a result of changes in states. So the solid states, the liquid states, And the gaseous states are three states in which a particular system can exist. Now, these three states are under microscopic approach. They are under microscopic approach. Why for the microscopic approach, we talk about the solid phase, the liquid phase, and the gaseous phase. They are the same thing. The only thing is that for the solid states, we are talking about the state of the, the state of the system as a whole. Is it solid? Is it liquid? Is it water? Or is it gaseous or in vapor? Now, for the phase, we're talking about the molecules of the system. Is the molecules in solid, are they in solid phase, are they in liquid phase, or are they in gaseous phase? That is for microscopic. So, for microscopic, you talk about the phase, while macroscopic, we talk about the states. I've already explained the difference between microscopic and macroscopic. So, you should know when I say state and phase, when I say molecules and the body as a whole. So, we have solid state, liquid state, and gaseous state. Now, this system can change from one state to another. Now, a system can change from solid state to liquid state upon heating, which is known as melting. Now, that same system, upon heating, continuous heating, can change its state from liquid state to gaseous state, which is known as evaporation. Now, this same state can also be reversed from the gaseous state back to the liquid state, which is known as condensation. And from liquid state back to solid state, which is known as freezing. Now, somebody may ask, is it not possible for a solid system or a system in solid state to transform directly to the gaseous state is possible. Something like your air freshener. Your air freshener is always in solid state. And when you put it in your house, you, 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 you notice that it immediately changes from solid to gaseous. You no longer see it again, it dissolves into the atmosphere. So that kind of change occurs from solid state to gaseous state and is a process which is known as sublimation. Now, if sublimation occurs, that means there can also be a state that occurs when you convert gaseous state back to solid state, which is known as deposition. So a quick one, which system undergoes deposition? I've told you air freshener undergoes sublimation. So just tell me which one you do know that undergoes the position tell me in the comment section so now we've seen change of states from solid state to liquid state to gaseous state or back from gaseous state to liquid state to solid state now when, when a system changes from one state to another it has actually followed a particular path particular path the path of melting the path of evaporation condition and freezing why these actions that has occurred freezing condition melting evaporation they are called processes so part is this particular change from solid to liquid is a part while the process is what freezing now these changes may occur at constant um properties now it may occur at constant volume which is known as isotropic it may occur at constant temperature which is known as isotherma At constant pressure, which is known as isobaric. Or it may also occur at constant entropy, which is known as isentropic. Or 
or at constant entropy, which is known as isentropic. It may also be adiabatic, which is there is no heat addition or subtraction from the system. So that is adiabatic. So when these changes occur from solid state to liquid state or from liquid state to gaseous state, it may occur at various uh, properties, may occur at various instances where we can hold the volume of the container constant. So for instance, if the container is this, having a volume of 3 liters, and we want to convert the system from a solid to a liquid system, we can also do that by holding the volume constant. Therefore, the new product will still be 3 liters, but it is now converted from a solid to a liquid. That is for isotherm. Same thing happens for isotherm.